classroom right over here. Uh, you can go right away as soon as, uh, you don't have to wait for me to dismiss you. You can go before the service starts. You're kind of getting into the habit. Now, for the rest of us, would you get out your OCF Connect card? It was in the bulletin that you were given on the way in, or it's in a seat back in front of you. You don't have one. Please let us know that you're here. If you're a guest with us, you're, we're thrilled that you are here. Let us know all about you. If you have something you'd like to s communicate with me, uh, I pray about stuff that comes out on these cards. Often I will uh, contact you to pray with you. Uh, you can do that on the back and just let me know. At the end of the sermon, we have a time of offering ourselves to the Lord. That's what these offering buckets are on the doors going out. And you can offer whatever it is on your heart to the Lord by putting this in the offering bucket along with tithes and offerings representing all the work that we've done. We consecrate those by giving a portion of it to the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah? We can give and we can say, Lord, this is yours, and we dedicate it to you. And that means a whole bunch of it, all of it, is dedicated to the Lord, not just the part we give. And so we do that representing our Monday through Saturday selves. And we offer all of it to the Lord, including ourselves. So it's really, really good to have you here. If you have any questions at all about our church, there is a table, uh, information center table there on the, in the foyer where you came in, and there would be somebody there right after the service to answer any of your questions. So good to have you all here today. Good morning. We are getting closer to the end of our warm clothing accessory drive as our weather is warming up. But you still have a chance if you want to bring gloves, hats, scarves, warm socks, things like that to donate to our bucket out in the lobby. Feel free to do that. Um, you can also bring things during the week and drop them off at the office if you want to do that as well. Um, we're going to start a new series soon that's going to take us through Easter. So go ahead and watch this video, and then we're going to hear from Pastor Phil. church. Um, 
just wanted to use this opportunity to just give a brief update. Um, those of you who know that we were scheduled to be uh, in Nigeria by now, probably wondering whether this is my reincarnation, but <laughs> it is still me. And um, the city that we had scheduled to fly into, we couldn't land in that city. And um, we know that quarantining um, for a family of four is the price of another ticket from America to Nigeria. So um, that's been postponed and uh, most likely we'll still make that mission trip. Um, even if we can't make it as a family, I definitely will make it. Um, but the good news is that a lot picked up locally and we started doing a lot of stuff. So we just want to use this opportunity to once again thank you for your support and prayers. We have our flyers here. It's the same as last time, just this time. We finally done our website, so you can uh, check that out and uh, keep in touch with us. Thank you very much. All right, so Phil and Melody and the kids will be taking off one of these days, and right now they're very busy doing ministry, and those uh, flyers are available to people out on the information center to be able to follow along. Uh, we at, at Opportunity Christian Fellowship, we support several different mission endeavors, uh, seven of them, and Phil and Melody are one of them, and we are going to see a little bit about another mission enterprise that we are supporting, so watch this. Hello OCF, this is Harley, and I'm bringing you our mission moment for the month of March. Now even though we're in, only in March, uh, we've already fully supported two of the seven missionaries that we have taken on, and so I want to thank everybody who's given already that we're ahead of schedule so far for this year. Today we're going to learn more about the Spanglers. Now the Spanglers are regional representatives for the Free Methodist Church in Southeast Asia, so they all oversee the entire region. But today we're going to learn more about what they're doing specifically in Vietnam, uh, through a five-minute video that they put together with one of the pastors that they work with there. So we'll go to the tape and get a view of that. And I just want to take this time again to thank everybody who's given and will be giving as we support these missionaries and their important work all around the world. Thank you. So I'm just thinking about how it is uh, such a beautiful thing to work together in the kingdom. So, you know, you and I have um, the good friendship and relationship. We work together. Oregon Conference, um, Free Methodist Churches work with you and uh, Brother Tom works with you, maybe others, other leaders in, in FMC work together. We are better together. And I just wonder, um, can you talk about how you feel good that we are working together and how the Lord uses you to um, bless others. Yeah, the Lord used me to uh, have like um, partner with uh, a, a pastor, uh, Pastor Tom, and because he uh, he visited another village in that area 26 years ago, he, he uh, asked me to uh, pray and to go with him and to help the village. We keep in touch with that place, and uh, we sell the sea. Uh, we sow the sea again, and uh, yeah, we thank God that um, He opened the door uh, for us to um, reach the children, and the people are still very open. That's yeah. another great example of being better together. So He, uh, Pastor Tom, prayed for 26 years. The Lord led him to you you have something to contribute also so we are all we are all working together in the kingdom it has been a very hard year for all of us around the world with the pandemic but um what has happened um in the free methodist churches in yeah the church uh sometime uh quarantine we cannot uh, we couldn't uh, gather together but uh sometime we um allowed to come together. And uh, we thank God that uh, um, our faith in the Lord uh, grows stronger. And we uh, also use the um, advantage of uh, technology. We uh, meet um, uh, online. We use Zoom to study uh, Bible uh, together with uh, pastor and leaders uh, uh, through uh, uh, the, the whole country uh, every uh, morning uh, Tuesday morning and Thursday night can you yes. um yes. can you tell tell a little bit about uh Ruth who 
she's the one who passed away planting a church and um she she struggled with cancer for almost a year and and um but i want to hear how that church is doing now and ruth she uh, she was so um enthusiastic and uh, like she gave all um to the lord and to uh, the kingdom's work we thank god that uh, he is faithful and he helped us to go through those difficult things yeah amen we are going to baptize for two more people in that just soon um, they are um, study um, basis doctrine and uh, um, system of root uh, pastor root sister um, is uh, taking uh, um, the place the responsibility from uh, root uh, to do that I'm so uh, regularly encouraged by your heart for people who need to know Jesus and especially people who are struggling that are poor yeah i would like to say thank you so much uh, i'm very encouraged and uh, uh, happy to um, uh, work alongside and uh, with you uh, brother and sister in uh, yeah uh, you uh, you're so important to uh, our ministry yeah we are so encouraged Yeah, thank you so much. Gospel partnerships extend across cultures, languages, and kilometers. As members of the body of Christ serving Father's purposes around the world, we are better together. Hello. Oh, there I am. Something that I contemplate often is if I am going the right direction. And I'm currently in this phase of life where God is giving me blessing upon blessing and opening door after door. Some of you know that I'm going to school and I work like four different part-time jobs. And I'm so grateful for that. But sometimes I just sit and think, God, my purpose is to not run around 100 miles an hour in 10 different directions forever, right? This isn't where I'm supposed to be in 10 years. And so then I have to sit and try to think and think about every possibility and every option and where am I supposed to be. And I always end up thinking, I don't know how I'm supposed to figure this out. So the other day when I was in this midst of contemplating, I was doing a devotional and I came upon this scripture and I want you to read it with me. Ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. And I read that and I went, well, I'm pondering and I still don't know what that means. I'm going a way, but how do I know if it's the right way? And I was just staring at the page, wondering, kind of getting a little bit saucy, thinking this doesn't make any sense. It's not very helpful. And I looked and I had highlighted a verse a few chapters before that says this. For they eat the bread of wickedness and they drink the wine of violence. And I had highlighted this because this was people who are lost. And in the column next to it, I had written, Jesus is the bread of life. He is the way. So I don't have to be searching and I don't have to be trying to figure out my purpose because Jesus has already given me the purpose. And maybe I don't know what that is, but as long as my eyes are on him, He's going to be the way, and he's going to show me how to get there. So stand up with me, and let's worship that he is the way. If we're lost or confused, or if we have too many doors to go through, God's going to be the way no matter what.
Okay, we are going to pray this morning. Can we bow down and pray? Our dear loving God, we come to you this morning. We come to you with thanksgiving. We come to you with <coughs> joy. We come to you thanking you, Lord, because you are mighty and you have been with us throughout the week. We know, dear Lord, we haven't been faithful. We haven't gone the ways that you want us to go. We haven't been able to follow you the way you have called us to do it. But we come this morning asking you for forgiveness. That, Lord, as we worship you, as we lift up your name on high, you may help us to know that you are the way, the truth, and the life. We pray, Lord, that you may continue to sustain our testimonies, that you may continue to give us power that comes from thee. As long we think about you, especially at this time of Easter, that you are looking upon the way that you suffered just because of our sins. We pray that Jesus, you may be with us and give us the strength to live for you each and every day. Give us the joy of knowing that if we live for you, we we'll inherit the kingdom of heaven. And that's why we are here this morning praying for our church, lifting our pastor, Pastor Dan, that Ron, you may embrace him as he gives them sermon, that we may know you more and more, and we may come closer to you, Jehovah King of Glory. Thank you for the many things that you have done for us, even when we have neglected you. Thank you for being there for us, even when we have shown part of the glory. Father, this morning, we, I want to thank you and lift up your name on high, that Christ, you may be with us this morning, that you may give us the strength to always wake up and say thank you, Jesus, because you have given us this life that we, we enjoy, this life of strength, this life we can say that, Lord, you are the one who saved us from the evil one. Thank you this morning, Jehovah King of Glory, that as we continue to worship and magnify your holy name, that you may come closer to us. Father, we pray that you may forgive us before we come to your throne of mercy, Jehovah King of Glory, that you may wash all our sins and we may come sinless, and we may come with humble heart, and we may continue with it all the days of our life in this earth. For this we pray trusting and believing in Jesus' holy name. Thank you, God. Bye. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You guys can have a seat. It's wonderful to hear the prayers of his children as we come before him. And I know he has a big I know he has a big smile on his face because of it. Martin and Helen have been blessed also, and Martin wants to come up and just say a couple words about that, and then I'm going to go into my sermon. All right. Very good. Come on up here. So the, We have an online service, and so everybody has to stand on the X. <laughs> Otherwise, they don't know what's going on out there. wife Helen and I are here to say thank you for the church uh, because uh, for the last two months or even I think more than two months our mother-in-law has been sick she had a stroke very bad a severe one and uh, she ended up in an ICU it was very expensive for us it was very hard for the family even for my wife here it was not easy to for her being here when uh, uh, her mother is sick in Kenya 
So we had a very hard time. But when we contacted the pastor, we thank you, pastor, for your uh, being passionate and being loving to us, you and your family. God bless you. God bless the church. We thank you because we had we received a lot of prayers from you. We received a lot of blessing. We, we, we received a lot of financial support. And we want to sincerely thank you in the name of Jesus. We feel that we are, we are home. We are, you know, we are part of you. We are family of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we feel blessed. And every time we pray together, we say, God bless you. And may you continue to, uh, uh, you know, do greater things to your lives. So Helen is planning to go and surprise her mom during his Mother's Day. So pray with us. I know it's a long time she has not seen. <laughs> but I think everything will be OK. Thank you, sir. Thank God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. You know, I can't really imagine. I know a lot of people go through this where they leave their country of origin and then uh, half the time, most of the time, they're leaving either children or family behind. They, many, 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 sometimes a lifetime goes by, and they don't see them. And so uh, God bless you guys. May it be a rich time for you there as you go back home to Nairobi. And we've got several uh, people from Kenya. Uh, this, we're going to have to adopt. We're going to put a Kenyan flag up here or something, and, right? Uh, there we go. So uh, wasn't that a wonderful prayer that Florence brought us uh, all the way from Kenya through the Holy Spirit to here? So <laughs> uh, there we go. Amen. All right, so we're on the last uh, sermon of this two-part series, the second and the last sermon on 21st century temples. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about holiness today because that ta tabernacle, that temple, was a holy place for the Lord. You have notes in your bulletin that you can obviously use if you'd like. Uh, that's available to you. Also, online service as you are watching. There, there also is a note section for you on the screen there. If you figure out where that is, you can follow along, along with the songs that we've been singing. The words are there too. So please do that. Okay, so the tabernacle was nothing like anybody had ever experienced before. It was very impressive. It had fire at night and a smoke column during the day. So it was something that was very visible. It made people stand up and take notice. You see, God's presence tends to do that. It makes people take notice. There was a burning bush up on the hillside. And Moses, who was the shepherd, was going along with his sheep one day. And he saw, that's kind of strange. That bush seems to be burning, and yet it doesn't burn up. And so he went out there to check it out. And God spoke to him from that burning bush because that was representative of of God's presence. God's presence makes us stand up and take notice. When Isaiah saw God, he saw God in this vision, and the Bible tells us that God, the train of his robes, of Isaiah, uh, excuse me, of, of God's robes filled the temple. And there was a smoke, and there was fire, and it was so incredibly uh, tremendous to Isaiah that he thought he was going to die. It was that impressive. Moses, when he was up on Mount Sinai, he didn't realize that his contact with this holy God had rubbed off on him. And when he came back down from, the Bible tells us, from that mountaintop, his face shone so brightly that people were scared of Moses. And Moses actually had to wear a veil to cover up that shining face. And then in the New Testament, we see Stephen, the first martyr. And as he was being killed for his faith, the Bible tells us that his face shone. And it actually made those that were against Stephen even more angry as they were trying to get rid of him. There's something about the presence of God. The day of Pentecost, fire descended from heaven. There was a thunder. There were languages spoken. It was something that was impressive, something that made the whole city of Jerusalem stand up and take notice that something was going on here that was that we needed to take pay attention to there was something that was special about that 
And there's a word for this in the Bible, and I have already alluded to it, and that is the word that describes all of this. All this standing up and taking notice of what's going on because something incredible is happening. That word is holiness. That is what holiness means. It means being set apart. It means being something extraordinary. It means being something that you stand up and take notice about. And so when Isaiah saw this vision of God in this temple, he says, oh, I am doomed. It's all over, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of heaven's armies. You see, when something is holy, it is no longer common. It is no longer ordinary. We have another word we use that for that is a theological word. It's called profane. It's not like profanity, but it's, it's that in that sense of something that's very common, something that's profane, something that is just ordinary. And what is holy is the opposite of that. It is something that is special, is extraordinary. It is sacred as opposed to profane. It is something that is a sacred space. It is holy. And, I, and the, Isaiah thought, he was going to die because it was so incredibly extraordinary. On the Mount of Transfiguration, you recall the story. Jesus and the disciples, James, John, and Peter, went up there with him. And Jesus is transfigured, and the light off of Jesus' semblance, his robe, became so white and so bright that it, it was brighter than anything they'd ever experienced. And all, all, their, all they could do was lay down and worship. That was their only response to this extraordinary presence that was within them and with, within Jesus. So holiness. Holiness is amazing. Holiness is breathtaking. So breathtaking sometimes that the prophets of old said you can't even stand to be in the presence of God. He will literally take your breath away. It will be so amazing and extraordinary. It is, it is beautiful. It is terrifying. It is majestic. The holiness. That's a word that describes all of that in the Bible. When we encounter holiness, we realize this ain't Kansas anymore. Watch this video clip. Toto, I have a feeling we're not in Kansas anymore. Must be over the rainbow. There you go. That's holiness. Holiness is something that re you realize this something is going on here that is far beyond what is normal. And the Bible tells us that God is holy. Habakkuk 3:3 3, 3 says, I see God moving across the deserts from Edom. The holy one. There's that word, the holy one, coming from Mount Paran. His brilliant splendor fills the heavens, and the earth is filled with His praise. God's light, God's splendor is like none other. It is like nothing we have ever seen in the common, ordinary walk of life. I don't know if some of you have been on a plane, have you noticed when the sun is shining brightly, you get little sparkles of light that come up from you know, 33,000 feet down below. And what is amazing to me is that what it is is the light shining off of a windshield of a car or the window of a, of a building. And that speck of bright light is so bright that we, can, we notice it beyond anything else. It just captures our attention. We thought, I just saw something flash down there, 30,000 feet below, where we, could not, we cannot see at all the building or the car. But we see that flash of light. God's light is so brilliant that it just captures our attention. We see this again in Exodus chapter 15, verse 11, when the prophet writes and he says, Who is like you among the gods, O Lord, glorious in holiness, awesome in splendor, performing great wonders? Theologian Rudolf Otto says this, Holiness is awe, majesty, vitality, otherness, by otherness, he means that it's something that is different than we are. It is something different. It is something other than what we commonly experience. He goes on to say that it's compelling fascination, like the burning bush on Mount Sinai. 
Moses was compelled to go. There's something so extraordinary about this. He had to go and check it out. Awesome. Splendor. The fire that descended on the disciples the day of Pentecost. That thundering roar. What, was the, what, what did the people do in Jerusalem? They came running to see what was going on. Holiness. The presence of God. You see, when something is normal and every day it's called common, but when something is very different than that, so different that we stand up and take notice, we describe that as holy. When I was 16 years old, I worked on this ranch, and we rode, I rode a horse, we rode horses, and we herded cattle, and actually branded cattle and all that. But that took place on the Samana Peninsula, the Dominican Republic where I grew up. And here's a picture of the Samana Peninsula. So I'd go on my horse, I would get the cattle, I would pause beneath the fruit trees and stand up on my saddle, a couple times I fell off, and pluck the fruit from the trees. And then every once in a while, I'd come out on the path and get a vista from up on those hills of the beach and the coconut palms and the blue sky, or the blue sky and the blue water and the white sandy beach. Doesn't that look lovely? That's where I grew up. Let's show another picture. There's a, a close-up. That's the Samana Peninsula. And it would take my breath away. It was just like, where am I? I'm not in Kansas anymore. It's like, what's going on here? This is just too beautiful. Is it real? It was holy, you see. That is holiness. It is this amazing beauty. Or perhaps you've experienced some time in your life when you are at a concert and the bass is playing and the bass drum is booming and you can feel it. Not only can you sing it, not only can you listen to it, but you can feel it. And the harmonies are just exceptional. And the beat is right on time. And the lights are just amazing. And you, you're just filled. You're inspired. You're, you're taken into another world. Holiness. Or perhaps when you hold for the very first time your newborn. I remember when Jordan was born and Christopher, Christopher first and then Jordan each time. You know, before that he was just kind of a bump and then a bigger bump and then a real big bump. Right? And, you know, amazing. You could lean down and you could, you know, have, dads, have you done that where you put your hands on mom's belly there? And you felt that little baby moving in there. And it just fills you with, wow, this is something else. This is really happening here. But then there's nothing like that. When the baby is born and you hold that child and you realize it just takes your breath away. This living creature that seemingly was just, I don't know, somewhere else. And now it's in my arms. He's all sprinkly up and ugly. He's beautiful. Sorry. Just beautiful little baby horse. Yes. You see, God's characteristics are so far beyond what we would consider to be normal every day that we call God holy. His beauty is so far beyond what we normally experience. He's a holy God. His purity and His goodness is so far beyond what our goodness and purity is. We call that holy. His power, His light, His creativity, His intelligence. All of those characteristics of God fall within what we describe in broad terms as holiness. That is God's holiness. And we stand back when we see it. We stand back and we go, wow, something is going on here. And do you know what God's most holy an attribute is? It's His love. His love compels us. His love calls out to us. The cross makes us stand up and take notice. How in the world could a God send His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and me when we've been separated from God, when we have rebelled against God, when we've shaken our fist at God, that same God. What love is this? 
It is compelling. It is attractive. It makes us stand up and take notice. It is unfailing love. Again and again in the Bible, I've said this to you before, right? Again and again and again throughout the Word, this word unfailing love comes up, and that is God the Father. And it is holy love. It is love that we cannot understand completely, Paul says in Ephesians. We can see it from afar. We can experience it, and yet it is so amazing, so so extraordinary that that love is something that we cannot fully understand. Amazing love. Hosea and Gomer in the Old Testament, Hosea was a prophet, and God wanted to show the Israelites the kind of love that he had for them, this holy love, this extraordinary love. And so he asked, he he instructed Hosea to marry Gomer, and Gomer was a prostitute, and Gomer many, many times was unfaithful to Hosea. And Hosea, God would speak to him, and Hosea went back again and again and again to Gomer, and again and again asked her to come back home. Something that was so far beyond what was commonly practiced in those days, that a husband would put up with that, that a husband would embrace again, not just once, not just twice, but many times this woman who was going off and being unfaithful in such blatant ways. And yet God was showing to the Israelites through Hosea and Gomer the kind of holiness that he has. He's a God that loves deeply, a God that loves incredibly, a God that has holy love. Here's the incredible truth. This God who is holy offers to us his holiness. Did you know that? I mean, just think about that, okay? All the things I've said about God. This God who is holy offers to us his holiness. He says to us, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. Now that to me is truly incredible because this verse in Leviticus that you read up here comes right in the middle of what we call the holiness code. Maybe you don't call it that, but some theologians call it that. And it's found in Leviticus chapter 17 through 26. So it's, it's quite a broad expanse of chapters. And those chapters together, we know those chapters as the holiness code. And God right in the middle of it says, you shall be holy because I am holy. You see, In these chapters, we are to have amazing honesty. It talks about honesty. We are to be amazingly truthful. We should have respect for our parents. That's way beyond the common and the ordinary. We should have respect for our elders. We should treat our employees uncommonly well and good. We should have love for our neighbors. That makes people stand up and take notice. We should be kind to the foreigner. We should have sexual purity. That makes the whole world say, wow. What's going on here? It makes the whole world stand up and take notice. See, that is holiness, my dear friends. And this passage in Leviticus, it's right in the middle of the holiness code. Amen? So what that means is that he is saying to us, you who are my representatives on this earth, I want your beauty to be amazing. I want your holiness to be extraordinary. I want your purity and your integrity and your power and your majesty to be incredible. When he says, I want you to be holy because I am holy, that's what he's saying. No wonder Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and have it abundantly. Because you see, he calls us to be a holy people. He calls us to reflect him. Paul writes about this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. He says, for we are God's masterpiece. I love that. We are God's masterpiece. We are such a masterpiece. Have you ever been to a museum where just some works of art just capture your attention? Paul and I were in the, the Louvre several years ago, and we went by and we saw the Mona Lisa. And there were like 100 people gathered around the Mona Lisa. It was so, the Mona Lisa, that painting is about that big. It's not big at all. And so we were so far 
back from it, we couldn't get close to it, that it really wasn't that impressive. I was impressed by the crowds around it. But have you ever gone to a museum and something has just caught your eye? Some of the Van, some of the Van Gogh, right? It's just amazing. The Starry Night, uh, some of those original paintings that you see in some of the museums in England. It's amazing. They just catch it. That's the holiness. That's the masterpiece God has created us to be. He says, I want you to be holy because I'm holy. It's the same thing Paul is saying here. I, God has created you to be a masterpiece. The word masterpiece means poem. That's what it comes from in Greek. It means poem. He wants us to be poems, beautiful poems that the world sees and the world stands up and takes notice and says, something is going on here that's extraordinary. It is holy. See, God's intentions for us is to stand out, not in a selfish way, not in a way that draws attention to us, but rather that draws attention to Him. You know, there's something going on here that's beyond Dan Bonney. I know Dan Bonnie. He's not like that. So something's happening, right? You see, that's holiness. That is the extraordinary characteristics of God that he, he blesses us with, with. We are to be a city on a hill, aren't we? We're not to be a city that's all covered up. We are to be a city on a hill that shines so that everybody around might see the light of God and be drawn to that light that is so sweet and so good and so amazing. Holy. But we miss the mark, don't we? We are fall far from holy. We miss the mark, and that's the, what the Bible calls as sin. We live very common and ordinary lives, lives that do not rise above the brokenness that we see all around us. We compare ourselves to others and we say, we're doing okay. Henry David Thoreau describes it this way. He says, the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. Isn't there something within you that longs? Maybe you didn't have words to describe it, but as I've been preaching this morning, there's something within us that longs for holiness. There's something within us that says, I've been created for more. I've been created for more. I think, Sydney, what you were talking about this morning is you were saying, God, where's my purpose? Where, where's my path? Where am I going? You were created for more, and you're, there's something within us that is drawn to that. And we go to Jesus and say, God, help my path. Help my way. May I be holy as you are holy. So what to do? How to live into this holiness that God calls us to be? How to be these amazing people that God calls us to be? Well, Ephesians, Paul goes on to say in the same verse, he says, for we are God's masterpiece. And then he says this. What does he say? Can you say it with me? He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. Can we say that again? He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. You see, there's a new creation within us. We need new hearts. We need new minds. We need to think like him. We need eyes that are open. When Jesus came and said, I've come to set the prisoner free. I've come to open up the eyes of the blind. I've come so that you might have life. That's what he's talking about. He said, you need something to happen within you that only Jesus can do. Jesus is calling us to be a city on the hill that shines. And it is only through the, the blood that Jesus pours out on the cross for us, created anew in Jesus. See, we're like Humpty Dumpty. We don't have anybody to put us back together again except Jesus. Jesus says that to us. So how do we allow Jesus' holiness to be part of our lives? How do we allow Jesus to recreate us? Well, there's another word in the Bible that describes that. One word, one simple word. And that word is dedication. Now, we don't really understand that word. Typically, when we think of somebody that's dedicated, we think of somebody that's kind of focused on one thing and wants to do it. But the word dedicated, biblically, used biblically, the word is much more intense, much more stronger. It's, it's much more strong than that. It's a word that means a total giving over. In fact, in the Old Testament, some of these passages we read are just incredibly uh, they're just ones that we, we almost have to reject because it talks about, I want you to dedicate this to me, God says. And the way they do it is by killing it. 
the sacrifices are dedicated to God through death. In fact, Abraham, when he went up on Mount Moriah, you know the story, dedicated his son Isaac to God. And the way he did that was he was going to kill him. Now, that's hard for our Western minds, our modern-day minds to grab a hold of. But that's what dedicate means. It means to be given over completely, to be burned up in God's fire, to say, no more of me but all of you, God. That's what dedication is. It is, God, I want you to be my Lord and not just on Sundays. But I want every day and every moment of my life to be given over to you, to be dedicated to you. You see, dedication to God, holiness to God, when we are dedicated over to him, God's holiness comes through that into us through Jesus Christ, and we are transformed. We are made into his children. And it's something that happens immediately, but it's something that happens for a whole lifetime in us as we are made the beautiful people, the beautiful person, the beautiful husband, wife, mother, gram, grandma, aunt, the beautiful employee that God wants us to be, the beautiful person that takes care of the creation that God wants us to be. It starts, but it's a continual process of dedicating ourselves to the Lord. And that holiness, you see, the tabernacle wasn't holy because it was the tabernacle. It was holy because God's presence was in the tabernacle. And we are holy not because simply we are dedicated. We are holy because we are dedicated to God. It is God's holiness that comes in us and through us that shines then like a light on a hill. It is not ourselves, but rather God is the source of our holiness. It's kind of like the moon that reflects only the light of the sun. We are all these little moons walking around and we need to be facing the sun so that the light of the Father reflects upon us and others can see because God's holy light is shining through us. Peter thought he was just going to be a fisherman. And Jesus said, dedicate yourself to me. That's what he was saying. He's saying, come follow me. That's what that means. Dedicate yourself to me. And P Peter, you're going to be much more than a fisherman. I will make you fishers of men. The little boy in that crowd of 5,000 thought he was just going to have his little lunch to eat. And Jesus said, give me your lunch. Dedicate your lunch to me. And little boy, not only will you eat, but this little lunch of yours will be made holy. It will be made so amazingly holy that it will feed 5,000 a feast. You see what I'm talking about, people? Dedication. Jesus takes this one and only son called Isaac. And Abraham was struggling because he thought, how in the world am I supposed to be what God has called me to be, which is the father of a nation? And I can barely have one son. And yet, Abraham dedicated Isaac to God. And God says, I got bigger plans than just one, Abraham. I've got a whole nation that's going to come from you. So many that... You won't even be able to count them. This will be like the stars in the skies. It, they will be dedicated to you. And that is amazing. That is holiness. Dedication to the Lord. It doesn't come from ourselves. It comes from God. We have a saying here at Opportunity Christian Fellowship, and that is part of our vision of who we are, is that we say a daily yes to Jesus. We say a daily yes to Jesus. We so easily get out of the sunlight, don't we? We so easily take back that dedication. We so easily begin to go our own ways. And as soon as we start to do that, that light that needs to be reflected from us begins to dim. We need to grab a hold. I think that's why Jesus said to us when he asked us to pray, he said, God, we need to pray this way. He said, give us the daily bread. Give us every day this bread. We need every day. We need this dedication to you. Every day when I get up, I need, Lord, to rededicate my life to you because I want to be an amazing, powerful, majestic, beautiful, incredible person that shines your light into this world. And I know that doesn't come from me. 
That comes from you. You are the source of holiness. Paul writes it this way. He says, Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. And as a result, he has brought you into his own presence, and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single flight, without a single fault. My dear friend, if you have dedicated your life to Jesus, you're holy. Lean into it. Lean into him. You cannot imagine what God wants to do in and through you. It's hard for us to believe that, isn't it? It's hard for us to have that kind of faith. But all we have to do is take the next step. All we have to do is grab a hold of Jesus. All we have to do every day is say, God, may your will be done. my will. You are holy. You are his masterpiece. You are amazing. You are beautiful. I want us to say that, okay? Say, I am holy. I am his masterpiece. I am amazing. I am beautiful. Now, I'm not telling you that just because you kind of build yourself up. No. That is who you are in Jesus. That is who you are. You know, the devil wants to take that away. The devil wants to say to you, and we hear it all over the place, don't we? We go to our high schools, we go to our junior high schools, junior high schools. <laughs> and all we hear is that you're less. We go to work, and we hear that you're, you, you're diminished. You're not enough. Whatever it is, it's never enough. You're not good enough. You're not beautiful enough. You're not talented enough. In the Lord, as we dedicate ourselves to him, he says, you are. You are amazing, beautiful, extraordinary. You are my child. And I desire to do through you things that you cannot even imagine doing in my name. You know that we cannot name ourselves. We were created to be named. And so, it, therefore, it is in our nature to hear what others say about us. And we hear all the names that people tell us we are. Some of the ones that I've mentioned before. So we listen to these names. But God is saying to us this morning, I want you to listen to me. And I have created you. Adam and Eve were, I mean, G the Bible tells us that Jesus is the new Adam. That he is created in this beautiful way as the new, as the Adam, old Adam was. I think that if we saw Adam and Eve as they were in all their glory before the fall, we would just be absolutely blown away. Well, guess what, people? That is the same spirit that lives within us now. And he desires for us to walk in the beauty of you know, we talk about the beauty of his holiness. That's what we're talking about. The beauty of God's holiness. Jesus thinks of you. Thinks of you so highly. So worthy of his love that he went to the cross. This is how much I love you, he says. And he goes to the cross. And that is his name for you. So I want, us, I want to lead us in a prayer of dedication. Maybe you here this morning. Worship team's going to come. And maybe... You here this morning, are in your heart of hearts, you realize that you have not dedicated yourself to Jesus. You have not given over yourself to Jesus. And it's a struggle. And guess what? It always is a struggle. Because letting go of something that I've clung on to in my life so tightly and allowing God to take hold of it is equivalent of dying to it. We dedicate it to the Lord. We die. We take our hands off of it, whether it's a child or whether it's a job or whether it's a relationship or whether it's the future or the past or the present, whatever that might be. And so obviously there's this struggle. And yet this morning, 
if you are going to be clothed, the Bible uses the language of being clothed with righteousness, with holiness, in other words, then you have to be able to let go of that other stuff. You have to dedicate yourself to the Lord. So I would like to lead you in a prayer of dedication and, and invite you to be born again, to be recreated again, to allow the God who is extraordinarily holy to take hold of your life and transform your life from the inside out. And I'm asking you this morning, I'm inviting you this morning to dedicate, to give over your life to Jesus. So we're gonna, I'm going to lead you in prayer, and then we're going to sing a song. And in the song, I want you to, to simply acknowledge the Lord Jesus Christ and worship him as your Lord and your Savior. So let's pray together. Dear Lord Jesus, we come before you. And God, we cannot imagine what you've called us to be, what you've called us to do, how you have, what you have in store for us, Lord Jesus. But we know that your purpose for us is extraordinary, beautiful, amazing. But Lord, we've been holding on to things. We've been struggling with things about truly allowing you control over them. Maybe it's a job, maybe it's a family, an issue of control in my life, Lord, whatever that might be. But today, this morning, we want to give it over to you. We confess all of this to you. And we say, Lord Jesus, I want you to be the Lord of my life. I want you to save me from my sins. I want to be able to reflect your holiness to this world. Lord Jesus, make my heart something new. Transform me, Lord Jesus. Help me to think correct thoughts and have a mind that is transformed by you. Help me, Lord, to have the power that comes from you, to be the person that you've called me to be. Lord Jesus, I give over to you all that I've been holding back from you. All that I've been scared to turn over to you, Lord Jesus, I dedicate now to you. And I do, and I pray these things, Lord Jesus, in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who shows us that he dies for us with most holy love. So we can entrust our lives into your hands. And we praise your name today. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you get out your OCF Connect card, please? If you've dedicated something anew today, maybe it's the very first time, would you write it on there? Just say, I've dedicated, Lord, I dedicate this to, to you, Lord, today. And then as you go out, would you put it in that offering bucket and say, I'm, I'm, I'm giving this to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. May my life shine. May my life shine for you. Let's stand and let's worship the Lord.
sing it, Osea. Sing it to him. light shine upon us and may we be brilliant because of your light in this world in Jesus name we pray amen have a wonderful wonderful week Jesus,